hello. My name is Paul Busby. I am the general music teacher, director of traditional band, and director of modern band for Edna M. Carrillo Elementary. Our campus has become one of the hotspots of music education in the Houston area, having won many awards and done many performances throughout our community. Welcome to my music class, or in other words, the front room of my house, but as you can see, we have a lot of different things that we can play around with. Now, I'm going to start with the most basic principles of music education and try to get as, as advanced as we can as we go along. I know there are some of you who have not attended too many music classes. I know there are some of you who've been playing a musical instrument or done singing or theater or arts for years. I'm going to try to accommodate each and every one of you. One thing I would like you to do, a little project, don't think of it as homework. But I would like you to submit to me a recording of yourself either participating in today's lesson or doing something that you can do well. If you've been playing piano for years, submit that. We'd like to see it. If you're a band person and you've done this amazing trumpet solo, submit that. We want to see it. It is very important that we remind all of us throughout our community that we're musicians and uh, whenever we are separated, we still can create something beautiful even in our own homes. Now, I'd like to dedicate our video today to all of our moms and dads who are still at work right now. All of the medical professionals, utility workers, grocery store workers, and anyone else who I might have missed who is still having to go to work during this crisis. This is dedicated to each and every one of you. Hopefully what we are doing here can help ease your mind about your child's education and uh, can help you out a little bit and focusing on keeping us all safe and healthy. So you might be asking if I have lost my mind. Why does Mr. Busby have this constant ticking playing in the lesson video? What you're hearing is this thing pictured right here, a metronome. This device gives us the most basic foundation of any song, the beat. When we have a steady beat, such as this one, we can divide it and group it together to create a rhythm which is one of the most basic elements of any song. When you go out with your friends and play or have a good time, you set some rules. These two numbers stacked on top of one another are our rules. The top number means we'll be grouping beats into groups of four. The bottom number means the beats will be represented by a quarter note, which is a type of note we will describe very shortly. This is a single line staff that goes left to right. Many of you who have taken my class might be wondering why it does not have five lines and four spaces. This is a staff that many drummers use when they only create one rhythmic sound, or what we call pitch. We'll cover that in lesson three. Most music in its basic form takes a basic beat and puts them in groups of four. This creates a measure which is divided by these bar lines going up and down. The little box hanging down from it is a whole rest. It means you do not create sounds for four beats. This is a whole note. The reason why we call it that is because it takes up the whole entire measure. When you play a whole note, you're holding the note for the whole entire four beats of the measure. If you were to count it, you would say one. And on an instrument, you would play it like this. This is a half note, and the little box above the line is a half rest. Since it's only half of the four beats, we should hold it for two beats. If you were to count this, you would say the number that begins the note and hold it for two beats. One. These are quarter notes, and the lightning bolts next to them are quarter rests, as it takes four coins called quarters to make a dollar, and you have four quarters in a football game, it takes four of them to fill up a measure. As a result, they most often happen on the beat. Counting them is easy. 
One, two, three, four. Now we get into dividing the beats. These are called eighth notes. These little things that look like sevens with a dot on the end are eighth rests. If you fill in a measure with the maximum amount of these notes, you would have eight of them. You would count this by saying one and two and three and four and. The same thing happens with 16th notes. If you were to fill up a measure with as many as you could, you would have 16 of them. 16th rests look like eighth rests with an extra flag up top. You would count this by saying, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Try this at home. As you can see, I have a typical countertop and I have here two pins. Now, you can use any two objects, try not to make them pointy or anything. Okay, don't hurt yourself. And I'd like you to use any sort of table or any sort of surface as a drum surface. We're gonna try a few rhythms at home. Here you see my drum set, which is appropriate because we're gonna play some rhythms together. We're gonna do two separate rhythms, one simple and one complicated. And we're gonna do them in three different speeds. We're gonna do them slow, medium speed, and fast. Now, make sure you've got your two objects ready to go. Again, make sure they're not pointy because we don't want to hurt ourselves. And a tabletop somewhere. We're going to drum together. Please remember, if you can, record and then email me the recording. So here's our simple rhythm. We're going to do it in three different ways. We're going to count it together with the numbers on screen, count it together with the numbers not on screen, and then we're going to play it together with our two non-sharp objects. We're also going to do it at three different speeds. We're going to do one at 60 beats per minute. That's pretty slow. 90 beats per minute, sort of medium, you know, medium speed. And then 120 beats per minute, which is a good walking pace, but we're going to call that fast. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two and three and four. One, two, three and four and. One, two, three and four. One, two and three, four. One, two and three and four. One, two, three and four and. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and. One e and a two and three e a four. One and two e and a three and a four. One e and two e and three and four. One, two e and a three and a four. 
1e and a 2 and 3e a 4. 1 and 2e and a 3 and a 4. 1 e and 2 e and 3 and 4. 1, 2 e and a 3 and a 4. One e and a two and three e a four. One and two e and a three and a four. One e and two e and three and four. One two e and a three and a four. One e and a two and three e a four. One and two e and a three and a four. One e and two e and three and four. One two e and a three and a four. One e and a two and three e a four. One and two e and a three and a four. One e and two e and three and four. One two e and a three and a four. One e and a two and three e a four. One and two e and a three and a four. One e and two e and three and four. One two e and a three and a four. Just like we had rules with a meter or time signature, the two fours that were stacked on top of each other, we also have clefts in the beginning of every staff that sets the rule on how high or how low you play. Today we will focus on two clefts. The treble clef on the left is for instruments and voices that are high, such as flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, violin, and soprano, or a high voice, typically female, or the alto voice, which is a lower, typical female voice. The bass clef on the right is for low instruments, trombone, tuba, cello, double bass, tenor, or a high male voice, and bass, which is a low male voice. When we put these clefs together, it creates the grand staff. This is what a piano player reads when they read music. The treble clef staff is on the top and typically indicates the notes for the right hand that are higher, and the bass clef on the bottom typically indicates the low notes played by the left hand. The lines and spaces on each staff is very important to note. The treble clef on top, for those who play higher instruments, find their notes by dividing lines and spaces. From bottom to top, the treble clef notes are E, G, B, D, and F or every good boy does fine. The spaces are the notes F-A-C-E, which together spells the word face. On the bass clef, you find the notes on the lines by using the phrase, good boys do fine always. In the spaces, you find the notes by using the phrase, all cows eat grass. Please note, it is very important to always use these phrases going from bottom to the top. Also notice that each of these notes go alphabetically A to G, from bottom to top with a C in the middle called middle C. Now, if you look at a piano, all of these notes are represented by a white key, but the black keys that are between the white keys indicate what are called sharps and flats. They're sort of the notes between notes. If a black key is above the note, it is called that note sharp. For example, this black key is above the A, so it is an A sharp. If a black key is below the note, it is called that note flat. This A sharp also has a second name called a B flat. Let's take everything we've learned and make it into a song. Here is a version of Hot Cross Buns using notes that would be typically played by band kids. Referring back to lesson two, let's count the rhythms first. Please note we're not counting the rest because we would not be creating a sound during that period of time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Great, now let's find the keys on the keyboard. This of course would be played differently on various instruments, but I find that piano is the best instrument to show where these notes are located. You see here we have 
D, C, B flat, D, C, B flat. B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, C, 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 D, C, B flat. Try this at home. So, some of you may have instruments at home. Many of you might have a recorder, or maybe you might have a piano, or even just an electric keyboard. Great. If you do, then we're going to get a little creative, and I want you to record yourself doing this, and with your parents' permission, send it to me at pbusby1 at houstonisd.org. What you see here is a C pentatonic scale. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a backbeat or a groove and what you're going to do is you're going to play these notes in any order you want and create something amazing. Okay, so let's try that. So here I have my electric piano. Now you don't have to go fancy. You can go something like this, something small, okay. But for this purpose right here, we're going to use this big one right here. So what I recommend you do, you don't have to do this, but it's going to help you a lot. If you can get some small little stickers that are easily removable or post-it notes, I want you to put a uh, post-it note right here on that C, which is right next to those two black keys, right in the middle of those two black keys to the right of those two black keys. I want you to skip that note right there. That's our F. We're going to go on to the next note, which is our G right here. Okay. And then we're going to go A right there. So you're going to put two stickers in the middle of these three black keys right here. And then you're going to put one on the C right there. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy. You can use a cheaper electric keyboard or any sort of anything that looks like that but that way you can see what keys we are supposed to be marking so what's gonna happen I'm gonna give you a backbeat I'm gonna demonstrate first but what you're gonna do is you're gonna play any of these keys in any order you want you can even combine some playing this key, this key, and this key, all at the same time, okay? So let's try that. A little bit of a backbeat. is always end on this key or this key, which is the C. These are what we call the root or the tonic of the key or chord that you are playing. So that would make it sound a whole lot better if you end and begin on those keys. You don't have to, but it would sound better if you did.
Another instrument many of you might have at home is your standard elementary school recorder. So I have here displayed four notes of the pentatonic scale along with the recorder fingerings for each note. I went ahead and decided not to include the E and the other C because you have to use your other hand in order to play those notes. Now, all of you should know if you are playing a recorder, always left hand on top. So each one of these dots and each one of these holes that are being covered should be covered by holes on your left hand. Do not forget. Now, what I would like you to do, if you have a recorder at home, I want you to play any of these four notes in any order. If you're an experienced recorder player and can play the E and the other C, you can do that too. That would be fantastic. But for those who are inexperienced on recorder but might have one at home, go ahead and play these four notes in any order you want. Let me demonstrate. So before we play a crazy awesome improvised recorder solo on the pentatonic scale, I'd also like to mention that flute, trombone, baritone, or euphonium, tuba, violin, viola, cello, bass, and percussion that can play different notes also can participate in this activity as well. Do remember that the notes that you'd be playing are C, D, E, G, A, and a high C. Do remember, if you can do this, I definitely want you guys to email me at pbusby1 at houstonisd.org. Now, if you have your recorder, I am ready to put on this backbeat. Let's go ahead and make some music. everybody has enjoyed our lesson today. Remember, we want to hear from you. So, you've got a special project. Don't think of it like homework. Think of it as, as your spring concert. So, if you are an experienced musician, 
I want you to show us. Show us your skills. Show us how awesome you are. So if you are an experienced musician, I want you to show off for us and record it. Send it to me. If you... uh, got something out of the simple or complex drum exercises that we did today, I want you to email me that. If you have a piano at home or even just a small electric keyboard, remember we had a lesson on creating a melody with the pentatonic scale. I want you to email that to me. If you have a recorder at home, and can come up with some amazing, beautiful pentatonic melody that way, I want you to email that to me as well. If you had that backbeat and you have either a flute, trombone, or baritone, some people call it a euphonium, a tuba, a violin, viola, cello, bass, or any pitched percussion instrument, such as a xylophone, bells, any of that, if you can just remember that the notes are C, D, G, A, and a high C. I want you to come up with some amazing, phenomenal, beautiful sounding melody, and I want you to email me that as well. Now, no matter what, I want you to remember, always get your parents' permission before sending any sort of recordings. I would prefer a video recording, but if you can send me an audio recording, that would be acceptable as well. Anything that you can send me to show that music is still alive, even though we're all separated, that would be wonderful. Again, remember my email address is pbusby1 at houstonisd.org. Get your parents' permission and send me your talented, talented recording. Everybody stay happy and healthy out there.